we need to start talking about what we call the graphics pipeline. So what is the graphic pipeline? And it hands us the vertex data and the attributes. So vertex attribute. And then we take this data and we process it in the vertex shader, which we're about to write. So we'll see a little bit more in detail how that works. And then it hands the vertices off to the rasterizer, which converts them into pixels. And then the rasterizer hands those pixels off to the fragment shader. And remember that a shader is just another word for a program that runs on the GPU. So the vertex shader's job is to take the vertices that the CPU handed us and position them in space somehow. In our case, we're just going to pass them straight through. Say the CPU did a good enough job and we're not going to mess with them. But like some terrain might take a flat grid of triangles and then add some height data to them. The rasterizer will then take those vertices that have been positioned and will convert them into, takes the triangles and converts them into pixels, which are then handed off to the fragment shader. And the fragment shader is sometimes called a pixel shader because it works on pixels. We call it a fragment shader because its results are only a fragment of the output. They may get mixed together with other stuff. They may get thrown away. And so then the results of the fragment shader are then handed off to the clipper, which decides should they be thrown away? Should they be kept? Stuff like that. There's quite a few tests, tests that happen here, like stencil testing, which is kind of weird. Depth testing is, is, this, is there something else that should be drawn on top of this and, and other tests? But the idea is, if it fails the clipper, the fragment doesn't become part of the final pixel. 